kind of a example of what we did with the driver up there, in that here's the target line, and I could have come out here and if I could, oh, there's my little tour striker plane station, this is my name, whatever the name's going to be, don't worry, yes, we will try to sell this to you at some, at some point. <laughs> So that's a little draw, correct? Because right. we've got that path going to the right, face angle pretty straight. Ball still missed to the left because the face was too straight for that path. Does that all make sense to you guys? No problem there? Now, you know, there's the pro tracer on, you know, pretty nice draw. That would have been crossed over the target line a little bit. And functional shot. Now, what I've got, go back to uh, JC. So just to kind of talk over straight shots, and why we don't want to have ever a 0.0, .0 path, which is what Trackman's aiming on right here, is that if the face is one degree left, where'd that first ball go that I hit? Went too far to the left, didn't I? Right. right? The face to the, the second shot was a little bit better. It started the ball a bit more to the right, but the ball still overdrew across the target line and missed my target to the left. So actually, for that path in the previous shot, I need to face aim a little bit more up to the right, didn't I? Now, you know, you, people want to kind of, under, they want exacts, like, Martin, how do I exactly do this every time? I wish I knew. <laughs> wish I could do it, you know, but the thing I want you to understand is that you're going to have a lot more success understanding that if we always have a rightward path, we have the ability, I could put a bunch more aim sticks, yellow ones, between my club path, and I put this one down as an example, the outermost orange one, giving you an example of club path, and then a five degree face, a four degree face, a three degree face, a two degree face, a one degree face. A one degree face with a six degree club path is going to have the ball basically overdraw go to the left too much. A two degree face is going to make it overdraw go to the left. A three degree face might be perfect depending on the law. A four degree face might be perfect too depending on the law. You know, the law, the ball is always going to start 75 to 85 percent of where the face is aiming depending on the law. The lower the law, the more the the, the more that the ball starts with the face is in. The higher the loft, the more the path has a, has a play and the more the golf ball does. So do, do we understand the necessity to be effective golfers if we always have a path buffer, I call this. You never want to have a club path going 0.0. .0. If I try to have a 0, 0.0, let me see if I can do my best to do that. In other words, trying to swing, quote, straight down the line, which is what you hear all the time, right? You just want to swing it straight down the line. So here's an interesting thing. If I can swing it straight down the line, this one makes me nervous. I think I can catch it with a bit of a divot. See if I can get a 0, 0.0 club path, which is hard to do if I'm touching the ball on the way down. that was 1.3 to the left. Now what happens if I get a you know something close to that again? 
more, let me see, where's my, oh, there's my face to pad, and where's my swing direction on there? It's not on there, do me a favor. Oh, there it is, swing direction. So there's an interesting thing. So swing, my swing direction, the general shape of my hula hoop, guys, was going out to in. But why is my club path positive 0.4? Tom? No. Jim's trying to give you tips. Because <laughs> 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 I'm catching, Jim's all like, because I'm catching the ball before I get to the bottom of the circle, guys. You see what I mean? So there's my, you see that number on the right over there? Swing plane. What Wave the, uh, there you go. Yeah. So Coach Aaron's got the better hula hoop for this. So, you know, if I aim that, so I'm hitting, my swing direction is going to the left, two point whatever. Go ahead and put up JC video on that, would you? So I, I've got that scenario happening. You know, if you look at it on the left screen, my swing direction is going to the left, two point something. My club path, which you can't see at all by the human eye, really, because you don't know how much down I'm hitting on it. Right? I'm not really trying to hit down. But when I make contact, you know, that's why the club path and swing direction are, are separate items, although they're on the same deal. I'm catching the golf ball before I get to the bottom of that circle. And I know this is going to kind of go to some of you right now. And maybe you get pieces of it. But the more you let this kind of simmer, you'll realize that this inclined circle, when you touch the ball before the ground, you start to get a relationship. If we go back to TrackMan Court and click on that, uh, the, the four tiles in the green box. So go to the left, 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 green side. Tiles in the top right corner of the green box. Go to the right. To the right in the green box. Big green thing. There's a great, great big green box. Right here. You're in it. Here. There you go. That's okay. The big green one. So you see right there, you see that yellow, that the vertical yellow line that uh, I want Court to wave the mouse over right here? That vertical yellow line? That right there is the bottom of the circle. That's the true bottom. That's the true bottom, okay? I'm catching Whitey before I get to the bottom of that circle. Now, let me, let me do this real quick. You're good. So now if I take this and I orientate it around this way, okay, you see how, you can see if I look down on it, my swing direction is going across the target line a little bit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But since I'm hitting the ball before I get to the true bottom, my club path is still going to the right at the moment of the strike over here a tiny bit. Can you see, we're just kind of building up on the geometry a little bit about what you learned yesterday. You know, and some of this is like, man, why do I really need to know this? Well, you know, it helps to understand that if you were playing a game on this inclined circle, and we're touching the ball before we, you know, we're getting to the ball before we get to the true bottom, that there's some rightward path in there. You know, and, and again, we're kind of going back to stuff where we don't want this stuff backing out because that's going to create some like crazy left or path. And you guys are trying to blend this in the juggling act of a good swing, right? Flexion, side bending, turning, you know, some of your working in grip modifications, all this fun stuff. But circling back and understand why you always want a path buffer, either a fade path buffer or a draw path buffer. And so you can always have a face sort of aiming left of it. To do a fade. Yeah. yeah. You have most no, you bet. Because most people don't even want to know it. I'm the only guy in the group I really could say that should play one, you know? would be Mark. Now here's the opposite. So if I flip these over, you know, and there, there's my target line. So since I'm striking down on an iron, I have rightward path built in, correct? Okay, so I've got to aim this sucker quite a bit to the left. I want to start this face a little left of that target line. Let's see if I can get fade. Let's go to the machine. So club path, 8.4 to the left, okay? Face angle, 5.7 to the left. Go ahead and wave over those as I say, of course, so they can see them quicker. So yeah, club path, 8.4 to the left. Face angle, 5.7 to the left. Face to path, open, 2.6. You see on the right screen, the blue, the blue stripe right there? That's the club path at impact. Grab this little box right there, Court, and scroll that swing along. So this club is traveling you know, back up and in on our target line. You know, this club path is just kind of doing its thing. 
But at the moment of the strike, right there, you know, that sucker's going left, 8.4. My swing direction, guess what? It's going more, 12.0. Because I've hit down on it 5.3 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. And so the face isn't aiming. If, if the face and path are matched up, what would you get? Straight shots. Hey, you go. Like Christmas, once a year. Okay? And we don't want it. You know, but that's how, that's the buffer for a fade. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, cool. So, any, yeah, questions? No, please, it's time because uh, we're getting it going. Then. What club is that? Six iron. A six iron. You're hitting a shot. Uh, what, how much uh, uh, right, right uh, are you thinking for that shot when you're playing it to play the draw that you have? I am pretty straight, actually. Oh, did you? Uh, it squirts out to the right. When you're aiming straight and you're hitting the ball, I aim it pretty straight and it just kind of shoots it up. It moves right. out uh, and then just now, comes back. I aim, I aim what I feel is like a lot left. Uh, so you like you get there. Yep. Yes. You know, when we're, when we're coached with our players, typically when somebody's having a problem fading, they just don't aim enough left. Because they have, you know, because you can see how it's confusing when there's a, there's, whenever you're catching a ball before the bottom, you have built-in right or pack. And all that, of course, you do the, mm -hmm. the things that would mess it up. Yeah. Okay. How to not fade it? From what? From a square stand? Oh, you mean you, you mean some of my good players do? Yeah. So no. I would, yeah. So you a square stance. You know, trying to trying to create you know some sort of fade by. Well, some, some of those guys try to fix that hook by doing that. You know. Oh, yeah. The divots, the divots get too deep. And as right. You they get a little. Down, they get a little too steep. As you create more down, what what direction of path do you start creating more? Yeah. yeah. When, when you hit down on more, guess what happens? You, you get more right or kind of more right. Yeah. Sometimes it substitutes it and they still hit a straighter job. Because you know, here's the thing, the more, because again, we're, we always think, unfortunately as golfers, we think more in terms of Ferris wheels than we do merry-go-rounds. You know, so when you start to add more down on a shot, like if I really hit down on one, I'm going to shoot one of these into the net. I've done that too. Let's see what kind of AOA I got on this one. So 8.5, angle of attack downward. This is okay. Yeah, so swing direction, way left. So my swing's going way left. I matched way down. I almost zeroed on my club path doing that, didn't I? Straight ball. Right? So there's a straight ball trying to hit a fade, matching way down on it. That was good. I couldn't hit that one. I think I'll put on that one. One, swing one direction, left. five degrees to the left. Yeah, it, you know, swinging you know, with a swing direction, five left and a club path, 0 0.5 left. So you see how it kind of works? You know, that's, that's what's been interesting about coaching with that thing is that, you know, depending on the student, like I can set, I can just put you in front of this. Like sometimes in a one-on-one, -on -one, I'll do that. You know, I'll just say, hey, I'm going to leave you in front of the machine for 15 minutes. I'll leave the iPad on this one single pile. You figure out how to shallow load it. Kind of giving you some tools. You just kind of tell yourself in your own language how to do it. Because this, whatever I say, you got to reinterpret anyway, right? You got to put it into your language. And sometimes, when I was a kid, I knew my coach was an excellent coach, but I knew that I'd only take a piece of what he said because I couldn't do the other stuff. And I would interpret it a certain way and I'd put it in my language when I didn't do it. And that's what I expect you all to do. It's not verbatim do what Martin said. It's taking what you can. You know, what you can do now, you might be able to do, you know, five times better in nine days, if you think about it. My coach said to me, he goes, I, and this was a world-class player, George Newton, said, I, I got, and then he, he would joke, he said, sometimes in my easy chair, I have my best practice sessions. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, because I really just relaxed, and I could see and visualize what my goals were. Then when I went to the range, I could put it in motion, because you have to be able to process it first for your body to do it, your body's never going to do it. You know, so there's a part of that thinking process if you have drive time. You know, think about your putting routine, you're gonna, you know, some of the stuff, if it, you know, all those pieces about extension clutch and how this stuff relates, think about it in a, in a relaxed place, it'll start to come out when you practice. And of course, Great. question will go. Uh, do you think it's easier to get a draw with a shorter club than a longer? Uh, no, I don't. You know, I think, uh, I mean, is it easier to hit a draw? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's more, you know, I mean, there's more descent, which would produce more right of the path, but then there's more in lock. It doesn't the lock doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'd say I it's seven. I think, I think it's easier to control what you're doing with a short club at seven miles an hour. Oh, whether you're 
you're whether you're predisposed to try to hit the driver hard or not. I think we do so. Yeah. A lot of the stuff in the positions and the, the practice that you try to do <coughs> goes out the window at the higher speeds with the longer club. So in that respect, I can see how a shorter club would be easier to uh, because you're focused more on controlling what you're doing. You know, and, and you're the prime example. So you were when I got you on track, and all you did was your quote drill swings the first couple. Uh -huh. What I saw was. You know, these organized arms, this kind of look, 80 miles an hour, or 72 miles an hour hitting 180. And then when we gave you permission and put hit it hard, you went up to 85 miles an hour, and yet there was a big difference in distance because stuff started to get awry on there, right? right? When you had controlled arms, your body started to look this way. When you tried to take a whack at it, all of a sudden, arms got separated instead of you having an extension. See, where that's when stuff started to come apart. And that's why you can't do enough of the prescribed little short stuff. Because I'm telling you, you come back next year or two years, like we're spending a lot of people coming back now to school, is they're like, it doesn't change much. We just feel maybe the, the order we run the school, because we feel the group needs to talk about this or that, it might change a bit. But it's, it, the drills are, you're always going to be working on the radius. You're always going to be working on low point control. You're always going to be working on not letting things get awry. You know, so anyway, shall we go?